it was a, a fun club. You had to get up at eight o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning and drive down to the Galleria and then they had to prepare the ice and it was Zambonied and then they pebbled it. And uh, we had a scoreboard that they put on and then they brought the rocks out you know, on a sort of a trolley for, and it was the rocks were stored in a warm cupboard. The guys would hand the rocks over the side boards and they put them on the ice and immediately they'd melt in. They would etch concentric circles in the ice and take felt tip markers and, and try to color in the etched lines. The ice was, it was tough. I mean, it was really, really heavy. We only had a handful of ladies in the club at the time because it took somebody pretty strong. It took a woman pretty strong to get the rock just down the sheet of ice. It was regulation size except around Christmas time because they would erect a big Christmas tree in one end of the, of the skating rink. And so during those times, we had to shorten it up quite a bit. Most of the curlers in the Houston Curling Club at the time were transplanted northerners. And they were just real excited to have any kind of ice to curl on. Um, as, they, as they gathered steam, they were able to recruit local people that were just fascinated by the sport and, and later became members. Pretty much the only spectator since all the stores were closed is there was a very nice hotel there and the shopping center and some hotel guests would come out and wander around and, and try to figure out what it was we were doing on the ice and would ask us questions about it. Because in 91, hardly anybody, particularly in the South, knew about curling.